Na 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 na. This is the coolest marriage of the year, Nike and Red. It's day three of Anime Show 2024. There's so much more to see, so we're gonna cover a lot more. But let's start with these guys right here. I think people can be really excited about the relationship between Red and Nikon because both have strengths that could improve each other's products in the future. For now, we're really in a state of learning more about the Red culture, more about the Red products, and seeing ways that we could synergize together. But ultimately, for the people that are users of Red products, they can rest assured that Red is going to remain the same company, the same service, the same products, the same culture. I mean, I will just say that some of the impressive things that you can learn from Red is things like their Phantom Track technology, um, their expanded dynamic range in the vicinity of 17 stops, 16-bit uh, RAW, things that are not simply available within the range of, say, consumer mirrorless products. So that's the strength of RED. The strength of Nikon is in our optical technologies, is in our processing technologies, and in our user interface and know-how. So once you combine the strength of those two companies, we're gonna come out with something very special in the future. All right, I'm at Atlas, and we have some beautiful stuff right here. Yeah, let me tell you about the newest Atlas Lens Co. glass. We have four very exciting things to show. So the first uh, smallest Atlas Anamorphic Lens Co. glass I can show you is this, which is uh, Anamorphic Director's Viewfinder that also happens to be a shot glass. And uh, the other really exciting pieces of glass I'm excited to share are the new Orion Series 18 millimeter, the 135 millimeter, and the 200 millimeter. So we now have 12 different lenses in the Orion series, which are a two times squeeze anamorphic lens family. Can I take an espresso in that glass? An espresso? <laughs> I can use it, yeah. <laughs> Happy to help you with that, yeah. You probably have a lot of gear. With Checkroom, you can manage it perfectly. With cord bag, you can organize it in such a beautiful way. Let's come check out these bags. It's amazing. I'm getting all of them. So we make, you know, pouches for what we call sub-packing. When you have a lot of gear in larger cases or backpacks and you need to, you know, organize them or, or sub-pack them. So basically this is our core product. It's a, we call it cord pouch. So there are four different sizes. So you easily can see what's supposed to be where and using colors to color code type of equipment and so on. So, so that's our main product. Now we have like a smaller one coming out for more smaller parts. We have like a lead, lead system, so we can attach, you know, the bags in inside of the lid of our, you know, the most popular carry-on size cases, basically, like an ecosystem around organizing your your gear, pretty much. Yeah. All right, we have this beautiful new piece at Sackler. Can you tell me about it? Yeah, we've updated the ace. We had on our floor to try what a carry handle. We got a lot of good feedback from customers saying, oh, I love to carry the tripod with the handle. So we thought, why not give it the ACE users also a carry handle? So we put the carry handle on, plus two attachment points. So you could put a magic arm, you could put a carry strap as well. The other thing what we've done is we put a new mid-level spreader on. The old ACE had a mid-level spreader, but it was not detachable. Now the new ACE, you can take it off. We also improved the payload range. The old ACE XL had payload from two to eight kilos. Now the payload is from zero to eight kilos, so you can use it also with smaller cameras. The A still has three drag steps, plus zero, and it's like the Stachtler drag, the really smooth drag performance we are known for. It's a really nice compact system. If you travel a lot, for example, it's easy to get it in your case, and if you carry it around, it's really lightweight. All right, we found the smallest broadcast camera here at Proton. Can you tell me about it? Yes, this is the smallest broadcast camera, which just has 28 and 28 millimeters. With this small size, we managed to put 12-bit dynamic into it. And it's an SDI camera, we're delivering 1080 to P60. And it's fully controllable with a um, regular RCP. You can work with this camera in very close quarters, applications like sports, music shows, reality shows, and you can really do impossible shots. This camera has an inbuilt image processor fully developed by us, what is a Vega processor, and we can color grade this and match it to any other broadcast camera. Since the sensor is so big by 1.18 inch, um, we can create ultra wide angles. Um, we are showing here some options with a shot of a lens uh, of 2.2 millimeter. Um, so you can use it as a shot to get, get an overview. But the same thing is you can also put 
put it very close to the object. So here we have the camera just a few inches away from the plate, but we're still covering the entire plate, what it makes really neat. Currently we're showing first prototypes here. We're just ramping up production and will be available in two to three months on the market. A sales price with one lens will be $1,300. Now, if you're wondering what brands like Sony, DJI, Blackmagic, or Canon came out with this year, check the videos here. You have a, you have your tag showing. <laughs> I only ever make it to the bloopers, so... We bring Ryan for the bloopers. He was a personality hire. Yes. 